The TouchMix 30 Pro's patch matrix feature lets you quickly manage your audio inputs. On the back of the mixer, you'll find the physical audio inputs, which are represented on screen by a set of graphical controls and processing for each audio channel. Let's call these inputs and channels, respectively. As you would expect, the audio for input 1 is controlled and processed by channel 1, and the audio for input 2 is controlled and processed by channel 2, etc. But there may be an occasion where you may find it useful to put an input to an alternative channel. Let's say, for instance, you're running a music festival, and a new band is plugging into the stage snake every hour. You may want to rearrange the order that these inputs appear on your screen. You can do that using the patch matrix. But before you do this, there are a few things to understand. The patch matrix only affects the digital audio signal. Each physical input is still hardwired to its corresponding input trim knob. So even if you rerouted input 5 to channel 8, for instance, that doesn't change the fact that its input gain trim still has to be set using the trim 5 control. Also, unless you keep track of the changes you've made, altering the default patching can make signal tracing confusing later on. You know the microphone is connected to input 1, but why aren't you seeing any signal showing up on channel 1? So, before making a change on the patch matrix, ask yourself would it be easier and potentially less confusing to just physically repatch the input? If the answer is no, though, here's how to proceed. To access the patch matrix, Simply go to the menu screen and select Patch Matrix. The first time the patch matrix is accessed after the mixer is powered on, it may take a few moments to load. Once it's ready, you'll see the analog inputs across the top of the screen and the destination channels down the right side. A connection path is indicated with the lines joined by a blue circle. To change a connection, touch the button of the analog input you want to repatch. At that point, the button will turn blue. Then touch the button of the destination channel where you want to route that input. This channel will also turn blue, and a new connection path will indicate your new routing. If you make a mistake, simply touch that channel again to restore its previous routing. And when you're done, touch the analog input button again to complete the repatch. Patching a channel will automatically add a textual tag to that channel's name to remind you that this channel is now receiving audio from a different input. You can rename this channel to delete that tag, but you might forget about that patch later on, so be careful. Perhaps one of the best uses for the patch matrix is to route a single input to two or more channels. This is known as molting. The term comes from an old school analog patch bay that had some jacks wired in parallel so that a single signal could be patched to multiple destinations. You can molt an analog input simply by selecting multiple destination channels in the patch matrix. So why would you want to do this? Well, here's one example. Let's say you've got an acoustic guitar on stage and you've dialed it in for the main speaker system. But no matter what you do, you can't get it to sound right in the monitors without compromising the sound that the audience hears. It would make your life much easier if you just had the guitar on two different channels so that you could EQ one of those for the main speakers and then EQ the second channel differently for the stage monitors. You could do this by using an XLR Y cable to patch the guitar into two analog inputs or you could use the patch matrix to mult the existing guitar input to a second channel. In the patch matrix, just touch the input channel, in this case input 11, and select another channel that you're not using. You can see now that input 11 is routed to both channel 11 and channel 12. Then you can set up the EQ and processing on channel 11 to get the acoustic guitar sounding right in the house PA, and then work on channel 12 to get it sounding right for the guitar player's stage monitor. Another example of why you'd use this feature. Perhaps you've got a single microphone that's being shared by two different people, and you need to EQ each of their voices differently. You could mult the microphone to two channels as before, and then use the mute buttons on the mixer screen to toggle which one is active. The same idea applies if you have a vocal part in a song where the singer is supposed to sound like she's talking on a telephone or some other strong effect. With the microphone molted into two channels, you can apply the effects to the second channel, and then use the channel mutes to switch between the sound of the effect 
and a normal sound. It's worth noting that you can store a patch matrix setup using the store and recall function on the patch matrix page. And most importantly, you can quickly reset the patch matrix to factory defaults here as well. We're gonna do that right now. And that's it, the patch matrix. Just one more way that the QC TouchMix 30 Pro goes beyond mixing to help you get great results fast.